that has been a coup in Myanmar, uh, like like 10 days, 15 days ago. But um, what takes our attention is not why the coup happened and what will happen later on, but how this might encourage the other weak states elsewhere in the world. Now, since 1948, the military juntas uh, ruled the government and the, and, the, and the Myanmar effectively. When the transition started in 2008 from military junta to democracy, the army became concerned. Military chief General Minang uh, Milang announced that the army will impose at least a year-long state of emergency. Now, Myanmar has abandoned uh, natural resources, and but they are lacking of democratic or democratic institutions. Therefore, the army has always been in the control of the country. And as we know, once you have the natural resources and army controlling, uh, or the elite army controlling the country, usually they take what they want and they use the natural resources for their benefits, not for the developments. We see this since maybe Second World War a lot. Uh, since 2000, uh, the economy is one of the weakest uh, in the world, although uh, the progress the development in Asia is very quick, pace is very good, or has been good. Now, the civilian government in, uh, in Myanmar is elected in 2010, although the most of the ministers were retired army generals. In 2015, Suu Kyi, who led the opposition against uh, the opposition party, uh, from the House arrest won the national elections. And then uh, we have seen a big progress, economic progress also in Myanmar, because she has created a confidence, at least to the investors, uh, make some constitutional change, and we have seen Myanmar economy uh, recovering very fast. Uh, now, we don't know why there was a coup uh, in, 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 in Myanmar, but we think it's a, it is up to the personal reasons uh not a political reason and but we are we need more data to see and to uh, analyze um, because we know that the army hasn't got very or any tangible uh, threats from the government it seems that the military has made its choices and it seems the military was successful also too because uh, in the long run, what we are now hearing and reading that the United States or UN even fails, but also EU and other uh, strong and rich countries have failed to show strong reactions against Myanmar. The US administration says that they are going to put some sanctions, but we do not think that it will be really effective. So that puts us into another path to consider. And we are now asking, or we have started asking that, U.S. primary objective is to contain the rising China threat to its national interest. So, does the U.S. foreign policy to contain China, regardless uh, any attention to developments in the other parts of the world, encourage the weak states to distance themselves from democracy or not? That's what we are start to think about. And up until today, uh, I can only say that there are yes and no's we have. We are sting, uh, still uh, considering that what might be but as long as the uh, u.s national or uh, u.s foreign policy uh, shows more robust i will say reactions reliable reactions against these kind of developments we expect that there will be more weak states who will test the uh, united states uh, foreign policy in future let's see what will happen if you like this video there's a like button underneath the screen please press on it and if you subscribe yourself to our channel you will be notified with a link once we publish a new video thank you for watching and have a great day bye